Caltech has released its Class of 2028 profile, and today we compare it to its Class of 2027 profile and prognosticate out what may be in store for Caltech's Class of 2029. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website which is collegemeister.com. And if you're interested in learning about whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America, visit areyouontracktogetin.com. Again, that's areyouontracktogetin.com at which you will complete a free three-minute assessment. Your results will be emailed to you right away and they will help you clarify whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America. Caltech doesn't release the exact same information every year on its website, so we're gonna be doing sort of apples to oranges comparisons a bit. Let's start with the class of 2027, those students who started at Caltech in fall 2023. 41% of that class was female, 59% of that class was male, a total of 263 students matriculated. Many students don't realize that Caltech is small. Uh, they have changed their manner of reviewing applicants quite a bit from year to year in recent years. They're gonna do it again for the class of 2029. We'll talk about that in a minute. But one way or the other, you need to know it is small. Only 263 students matriculated into the class of 2027. In terms of the racial breakdown and ethnic background of the class of 2027, 0.4% were American Indian or Alaskan Natives. 37% were Asian, 5% were Black or African American, Hispanic of any race were 11%, White 22%, two or more races 5%, race slash ethnicity unknown 2%, and non-resident alien 17%. Non-resident alien is a person who is not a citizen or national of the United States and who is in this country on a visa or temporary basis and does not have the right to remain indefinitely. I will say every school reports this out slightly differently on their website, framing it the way they want. Uh, Caltech lists Asian as one category. Many schools list Asian American as a category. Uh, so that is interesting and subtle differences just to keep in mind as we review profiles as I do occasionally. In terms of the geographic breakdown for the class of 2027, 28% are from California, or were, you know, this can change if students transfer out, but 28% uh, were from California in the class of 2027, 13% from the Mid-Atlantic, 10% from the Midwest, 3% from New England, 10% from the South, 8% from the Southwest, 9% from the West, and 18% international. Now, let's look at the class of 2028. They do much more bells and whistles here. They're very proud to announce they've enrolled 222 first-year students. So that is a significantly lower number than the class of 2027. 13,863 students applied in total for the class of 2028. These are the students starting in fall 2024 at Caltech. And this year, they're sharing information about intended options in terms of majors, as they call them their options, computer science, mechanical engineering, bioengineering, electrical engineering, biology, astrophysics, physics, applied and comp computational mathematics, mathematics, and chemical engineering are all popular choices with 10 or more students uh, leaning toward that way at right now, at least. But this can change. They're just starting college now when I'm doing this video. Uh, students receiving need-based financial aid award, 50% and 20% are eligible for uh, Pell Grants. In terms of class rank, 44 first years whose school report class rank. Only 44 of the 222 go to schools that report class rank. So this is a meaningless statistic. 89% of those were in the top 10%. First gen, 15% in the class of 2028 are first gen. And then countries represented include Bangladesh, Brazil, China, Ghana, Italy, Kazakhstan, and some others. Uh, you know, United Kingdom has a, a mention in there as well. South Korea, Thailand. And of course, the United States. High schools represented 56% are from public. So as you see, they're giving a much more robust uh, chart this year at Caltech on their website to market themselves. 4.5% Catholic, 
16% private schools or that are secular, 16% international schools. Let's look at the race. They say geographical breakdown, but this is an incorrect title. You know, Caltech may have really great math and science geniuses, but whoever did this little document, they didn't write it down right. 41% are Asian in the class of 2028. Last year, it was 37% Asian. 5% black. Last year, it was 5% black. 11% Hispanic was last year. This year we have 10% Hispanic. This year we have 19% white. And last year we had 22% white. Two or more races has gone up to 7%. Last year it was 5%. Ethnicity unknown last year was 2%. This year it's 1%. And non-resident alien are 17%. It's interesting they're putting it in a chart like that. This year they're putting in a little bit of a pie chart. Last year they just listed it. Male 50-50 this year with female. So this is the big news. The news is this was Caltech's last year of being test free. Caltech, because it's in California and because of its leadership's philosophy on enrollment, uh, went test blind at a similar time that, uh, that uh, the UCs went test blind. The UCs are remaining test blind for the time being, but Caltech could not withstand the pressure of the fact that they they went test blind. It, it, how can you be test blind and be Caltech? You can't. You can't. So they couldn't hold out any longer. MIT went back to being test required multiple years ago now. Uh, they never were test blind. They were test uh, optional at MIT. So te Caltech went very much out on a limb on the left coast of the United States, and they went test blind with UC Berkeley, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, UC San Diego. It did not work out for them, clearly. They're going back to being test required. Not test optional, test required. So it does not surprise me that the, the ethnic and racial breakdown of Caltech has not really changed much from the class of 2027 to the class of 2028 because it was under the same regime, basically, of reviewing applicants without test scores. Now we will see for the class of 2029 is where I expect some sort of change because that's a huge new variable re-added to the mix that if really considered, you would think would alter in some way, shape, or form. Again, I'm not predicting how the breakdown of, of uh, first year matriculants, uh, you know, whether it be based off of gender, whether it be based off of race and ethnicity, whether it be based off of geography or country, you know, this is a big deal when you re-add standardized testing as a requirement, which Caltech is basically now doing. And that is why, again, I think that we didn't see much, if any, change this year. Now, I will say the class of 2026, going back a few years now at Caltech, excuse me, the class of 2025, just so you know, that class was 29% Hispanic and 24% Asian and 16% white. So black was 5% again, which is so interesting. Black basically remains steady, but all these other races are moving around and ethnicities are moving around quite a bit. And that's interesting to me because what it tells me is that the enrollment management team at Caltech is very focused on having their 5% black, but everyone else is much more variable. That doesn't happen unless there's a he heck of a lot of enrollment management going on. And what I mean by that is there are tools that are being deployed within that office in order to focus on maintaining certain numbers at quite consistent numbers from year to year. But certain numbers fluctuate quite a bit. Uh, because we see with the Asian and the white and the Hispanic, they are fluctuating over a four-year period from the class of 2025 to the class of 2028. But black basically had remained 5% every year. Now, I will say I cannot find the class of 2026 data, which is interesting. I'm pretty good at sleuthing this out. I'm sure it's out there. Like, I just didn't spend so much time. I don't have that much time to look into this. But uh, I could not find easily the class of 2026 data. I don't know if it was scrubbed from the internet for some reason, or it's just hard to find because maybe of caching issues and other things. But it is obviously findable out there. I just, again, I have a full-time job. I, I don't have the time for this. My videos are just something I do for fun. I would be curious to know it, what the demographic breakdowns were. The class of 2025, sex assigned at birth, was 55% male, 45% female. The class of 2027, 
sex assigned at birth was 59% male, 41% female. And then the class, the, the gender diversity, as they're calling it now, was 50-50 for the class of 2028. So this can change quite, a lot of things are changing at Caltech year to year, but not everything. Like I said, so far for all three years, the only thing I'm seeing say consistent basically is the black numbers, which are 5% every, every one of these three years. Like I said, the class of 2026 is missing in action. If you find that information, feel free to put it into the comments. I'd love to see it. And then if you could just source it out, that would be great just to edify our, our viewers here. But again, I think for the class of 2029 is when you'll see probably a harder time of the enrollment management team maintaining consistency because with scores required, things change. Let's put it that way. As we've seen at MIT, things uh, are quite changing, especially now in a post-affirmative action world. Gird yourself. I would assume there will be more of a uh, difference in the class of 2029 to 2028 than there was from the class of 2027 to the class of 2028 at Caltech. Now, if you are interested in getting into Caltech, uh, now I will I will just say Caltech does a very different read on students than many other institutions. So I'll just put out that as a qualifier. If you're interested in learning whether or not you have what it takes to get into Caltech after you've basically wrapped up your entire application to Caltech, your common app, you want to listen up right now. When you have finished your common app for Caltech and you want to know if it's as strong as possible and whether or not in its current condition your chances of admission to Caltech are impressive, inconclusive, or inadequate, you need my pre-read. Getting my pre-read now means having me review your entire application to Caltech just like an admissions officer or an admissions committee will review it later and receiving by email no later than the time you reserve a comprehensive report highlighting what's working and what's not on your full Common App and your Caltech Common App Supplement. If you've yet to submit your Common App to Caltech, my pre-read may motivate you to make adjustments to it before your deadline. If you've already submitted your Common App to Caltech, my pre-read will prepare you for what I deem to be your likely admissions outcome at... Caltech in Pasadena, California. To learn more about my pre-read and to purchase my pre-read now, go to mypreread.com. Again, that's mypreread.com. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process, go to my website, which is collegemeister.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.